Hello all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my vlogging channel. So guys, we'll continue the discussion with respect to advanced convolution neural network architecture. And in this particular video, we are going to discuss about the VGG16 architecture. In short, I'll also be discussing about VGG16 and VGG19 that are two variation with respect to VGG net. You know, and in my previous video, if you remember, we had already discussed about AlexNet architecture itself. Now, this particular architecture and this particular model that we usually develop in CNN is very, very efficient. Uh, and I've seen, according to my experience, right, if I compare some advanced architectures like ResNet, even VG16 has performed better than ResNet in some of the scenarios. So it is very, very important that you understand the whole architecture and how it works. We'll also try to compare what is the basic difference between VG16 and AlexNet. And then we'll try to see that why VG16 performs better. What are the disadvantages in AlexNet that we are trying to overcome in with the help of VG16. So all these things will be covered in this particular video. If you are new to this particular channel, guys, please do subscribe the channel and press the bell notification icon because I will be definitely uploading videos every day. And I upload nowadays, I'm making the speed to two to three videos uh, every day itself. So I hope you'll like it. So yes, please do subscribe the channel. Okay, now let us go ahead and try to discuss about the VGG16 architecture. Now to begin with guys, uh, let me just consider this. Suppose this is your whole architecture. The source of this particular image is from HTTP researchgate.net. Okay, so the whole credit goes to researchgate.net. And over here, you'll be able to see that the image is getting passed through a convolution layer. So this convolution layer, the count that I would like to keep is two because there are two convolution layer, right? One thing that you need to note over here is that the image size that is going 224 cross 224 cross 64. This basically means this is your height and width and uh, sorry, the image size will be 224 cross 224 cross 3, right? 3 is basically your RGB channel. Then when it is getting passed through this convolution layer, we are getting this. Don't worry, I'll just discuss about what is the kernel size, what is the filter size, how many number of filters are being used in my next diagram. Okay, but in short, we'll try to understand. So first of all, we have two convolution layer. Then we have one max pooling layer. Okay, one max pooling layer. Then again, we have two convolution layers. Okay, then again, one max pooling layer. Now in this particular scenario, right, I have three convolution layer, right? Then we have max pooling layer as one. Then again, three convolution layer. Then again, I have one max pooling layer. Then this is my three convolution layer. Then again, one max pulling, then I have fully connected layer, fully connected layer, and my output is 1000. Why 1000? Because we, this whole model is basically trained on ImageNet data set, right? So where you have 1000 categories and there are millions of images, and definitely this, uh, uh, this has actually won, so somewhere around, I think it was in 2013 or 14, this whole paper had actually come. We'll also see the research paper, don't worry about it. Now with respect to this, I will, I can basically write, initially we used two convolution layer, then one max pooling, then two convolution layer, then uh, we had one max pooling, then three convolution layer, one max pooling, then three convolution layer, one max pooling, three convolution layer, one max pooling, I guess I've written three, one, three, one, three, one, perfect. And then I have one fully connected, fully connected and finally fully connected which is my output layer of thousand categories <clears throat> so this is the overall architecture one two important things that you have to see in this architecture you are providing your image of 224 comma 224 comma 3 this is based on the architecture um, but you can always change your image you, whenever you are implementing this you can give 50 cross 50 cross 3 it depends on the image quality that you actually have right so uh, now this was a basic architecture still i did not decide like how did we get these values how did we get these values that i'm going to discuss over here in my next architecture in my next diagram basically and you'll also see that what is the filter size that we will be using okay that filter size i really want to mention it over here so that you will be able to do the calculation and remember guys this is a very very simple model okay very very simple model very easy to understand model you can also remember it if you just know this particular patterns the main thing in AlexNet what is the main problem in AlexNet you will be seeing that in AlexNet if I take this particular example uh, you, you you see that sometime it is using uh, 227 to cross 227 cross 3 sometime it uses convolution filter uh, or filter size 11 cross 11 and stride is 4 over here then you have suddenly 96 kernel then suddenly in max pooling you have 3 cross 3 then again, your convolution layer says 5 cross 5. So here you see a lot of variations, right? 
and it is very very difficult for people to just remember all these things right and also becomes difficult to understand if there are so many changes in this so what they have done is that in order to overcome this right they have come up with vg16 and in vg16 it is very very simple okay i'll just mention you about vg16 in vg16 it says that all the convolution layer okay all the convolution layer okay in this remember the filter size is 3 cross 3 okay and then here you basically have a stride of 1 and your padding will be same what does this basically mean this basically means that when i am passing through this convolution layer right this image is 224 cross 224 cross 3 right now whenever i pass through through this convolution layer i need to get the same output with respect to the previous image only this will change right this is the number of kernels but here in short you are applying a 3 cross 3 filter okay and the number of filters that you are using is 64 that you need to remember so when you apply this you will be able to get this but whenever you do max pooling in max pooling because there are only two things that are being used right convolution layer a uh, convolution layer with relu and max pooling layer with relu right in convolution you have the filter size you have the filter size of 2 cross 2 okay and your <coughs> stride is actually 2 okay so this is the property of convolution layer this is the property of max pooling layer so every time whenever we use stride of 2 here you can see that this 224 when we are passing through the convolution layer sorry max pooling layer of this one the output that you will be seeing will be the half of this okay half of this so how do we i calculate you just have to use this formula right uh, 9 uh, n minus or i can also write n plus 2 p minus f divided by uh, the stride right plus 1 just try to use this formula and this i have easily explained in my alexnet architecture right in this particular case what is my n n is nothing but 224 padding is almost same nothing is there then i will be using minus f what is the, my filter size my filter size is 2 divided by what is the stride stride is again 2 so it is nothing but 222 divided by 2 right if i divide this this is nothing but 111 this plus 1 is still there so i'll add this plus 1 and i'll get 112 so that is the reason why i'm getting 112 over here right so that is how each and every competition is done now you see that in this convolution layer again 3 cross 3 is there stride is 1 but padding is same so even though we pass one 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 two images like this, we'll be getting one one two images itself, right? And in this particular case, one two eight is basically the kernel that is getting passed over here. Again, the filter size with three cross three. Only the number of number of filters are getting changed, right? <clears throat> so after this, if we are again passing through the max pooling layer, again when I apply this particular formula, it will be one one two. Then for that, we'll be getting output as five fifty six cross fifty six. Now again over here you can see that number of filters is basically changing. Initially we had filters like 64, here we had 128, here we had 256, right? Here we had 256. Now similarly in this max pooling again this 56 will get reduced to 28, right? And here number of kernels is 5 to 12. Again whenever we are applying max pooling with this filter size 2 cross 2 and stride is equal to 2, you will be seeing that your image size is getting reduced by half, okay? This is getting reduced by half. And in this particular case, the number of kernels are not changing. Again, when you apply max pooling, so you can see that this divided by 2. I'll, I'll not put this divided by 2, but instead I'll apply this particular formula. And then from 14, I'll be getting 7 cross 7. And this will basically be my kernel size. Right? And this is pretty much simple, fully connected layer. If we multiply all these things, 7 cross 7 cross 5 to 12, we are going to get 1 cross 1 cross 4096. And finally, you'll be able to see that in this also you have 4096. In this also you have 4096. And finally, the number of output is basically based on the output of the image net, right? This is basically my image net. So this is the output. This is the thousand outputs that you are getting. But two important things, if anybody asks you, what are the advantages when compared to VG16, which I'm going to discuss, sorry, when compared to AlexNet. And the second question is that, what is the main thing? You'll be saying that in each and every convolution layer, the filter size is three cross three, the stride is one and padding is same. But in the case of mass, max pooling layer, you have filter size as 2 cross 2 and the stride is equal to 2. So every time when you pass through a max pooling layer, the image size will get reduced by half. Okay. And that is how the whole architecture actually deals with. Right. And this is pretty much important. Now, what I'm going to explain you is that how 
uh, how it is better than the previous architecture of AlexNet. First of all, guys, there are many layers. Okay, in this particular thing, we have 16 layers. Okay, in VG19, we'll be having 19 layers. Okay, and again, there'll be a slight difference with respect to uh, how the architecture will behave because I'll just show you in the coding. You'll be able to see everything in the coding, like how the architecture looks like. You know, when we'll be seeing the model summary, we'll be able to see this. Let me rub this quickly because I really have some more things to explain because you need to understand after AlexNet, trust me guys, AlexNet architecture was the architecture from where this advanced deep learning CNN came. People started experimenting with different, different convolutions, uh, max pulling layers and all. Okay. Now let me just go to the next slide. Now in this, this slide, you'll be able to see that we are passing three cross three convolution layer 64, three cross three, the same thing, whatever I've explained, the same thing, finally, you'll be getting uh, the thousand outputs. Uh, this is the architecture. And remember in VGG net architecture, you have two variations. One is VGG, VGG 16, and the other one is VGG 19. Again, some architecture chain. So this VGG 19 may perform better than VGG 16, but you know, just, just a small accuracy gap will be there. Not, not much. Now let's compare with AlexNet and VGG net. Now we saw that in AlexNet, sometimes you use 11 cross 11, sometimes you use 5 cross cry. Some suddenly you'll apply padding is equal to some value. Suddenly you'll say stride is equal to four, right? So this, this is really, really difficult randomly because they have experimented with all these things. They have put a lot of efforts in experimenting. So they're basically used, but with respect to VGG net, you have understood, yes, my convolution layer, right? It will be having three cross three filter size. It will be having padding is equal to same and it will be having stride is equal to one, right? And by applying this whole and similarly with max pooling layer, right? We did the same thing. You had two cross through, you had a stride is equal to two, right? This is the thing. And one more thing that you see that here, the layers are only seven. Okay. These are really seven. And if you know, guys, if you're using ReLU, even you create a deep, deep uh, convolution neural network, your ReLU will take care of the vanishing gradient problem, right? So it, that I've already explained in my deep, complete deep learning playlist. So this is also a deep uh, convolution neural network. So you will be able to extract more parameters from the images, right? And remember the fast last layer is also called a softmax because that softmax will actually be giving you the thousand categories. If you have two binary categories, you basically use sigmoid. But in this particular case, it is softmax. So if an interviewer asks, what is the difference between VG16, VGNet and AlexNet? You should say that, okay, AlexNet has less number of layers when compared to VGNet. And you know that both this layer uses ReLU. Now, even though we create a deep convolution neural network, definitely there is no chance of uh, uh, vanishing gradient problem because we are using ReLU, right? Because of the vanishing gradient problem, we sometimes use ReLU, right? To overcome those, right? And then you can actually explain about this. And you can also say one point in AlexNet, they have randomly, not randomly, but basically after experimenting, they have selected some fixed filter size, right? What if, if we have a general architecture and we know that, and it is also very, very easy to remember all these things, right? So these are the, some of the things that you can compare with respect to AlexNet and VGGNet. Now, once you have understood this architecture, the next thing that you need to understand definitely is coding, right? Unless and until uh, I don't show you coding, then everybody will shout at me. So it is better that I show you the coding part also. Okay? And coding part is very, very simple, guys. You just have to believe in Keras. That's it. Okay. You just have to believe in Keras. So I'll just try to show you. So I'll minimize this. <clears throat> now, this is the research paper, guys. Very deep convolution neural network for large scale image recognition. Now, remember coding is pretty much simple one is that you can you can uh, write with your own okay you can write the whole by just seeing the architecture i've sh also shown you in the AlexNet how you can write your own similarly you can write it but this all models are already presented keras you can reuse the weight you can see you have exception vg16 16 vg19 resnet and all so through keras if i go to vg16 this is what you just have to use you know in order to download the weights of vg16 so let me go over here now in this example, what I'm actually going to do is that guys, I am going to solve a problem statement, which is called as cotton disease. Okay. So I have these four categories. Now, remember, uh, I think I've also taken this in live class, but I really want to show you this particular example because it will be very, very important to you. So these are my images, right? This, this is, this are actually all my images. 
you can see over here with respect to different different categories and it not be this problem take simple cats and dog data set from kaggle okay and you can basically uh, implement your own so this is the image classification cotton disease image uh, leaves classification that i'm actually going to do over here remember the output is having four categories now how do you download the weights i'm actually going to show you i'll go going to show you for vg16 and vg19 using keras again this material will be present in the github now don't have worry about this particular code guys this code basically says that what memory fraction of gpu you have to use because i if i if i show you i have a gpu which is called as nvidia titan rtx so let me just show you nvidia dash smi okay so if you see over here you'll be seeing that i have titan rtx and uh, you know uh, all the other other things what is my cuda version everything 24 gb uh, vram i actually have how much is being accessed and all these things are available over here now first thing i'll just execute this this is just to allocate how much memory uh, i want from the gpu to be used and then you will be see, able to see and remember guys this tensorflow version right this tensorflow tensorflow version right if i print it tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore right if i execute this you'll be able to see that i'm having 2.2.0 okay so that is the reason if you have less than 2.0 just remove this tensorflow from starting okay start from keras dot layers and all okay so here i'm uh, putting input lambda dense flatten then i have model then you can see that again just if you go and see over here from tf dot keras dot application dot vg16 so similarly i have written over here from keras dot application dot vg16 import vg16 right so i've done this you can also use the da image data generator for data augmentation and finally you also have to use some sequential model now once i execute this no module keras where is keras which line is this okay so i made a blunder over here so i showed you if your tensorflow is less than uh, 2.0 at that time that particular thing will work so i've executed this right then i am given the image data set as 224 comma 224 why did i give it because in vg16 it will be expecting as 224 comma 224 as a good practice i am giving that same size again you can give your own size okay then i am giving my training path and my test path so this is my train and test now this is the most important statement okay i am just going to write vgg16 library okay as shown below to this and this okay now when i'm using the i have imported this vg16 right so here i'll be using this vg16 the input image shape is nothing but image size plus 3 so this basically says that 224 comma 224 comma 3 3 is my rgb channel always remember if you really want to reuse the weights this weights parameter should be given as image net please do remember this this is very very important to understand and then we have include top is include underscore top is equal to false okay this basically says that remove the first and the last layer because we definitely know that my first layer will definitely have 224 comma 224 from the weights itself but i sometimes people want to put their own input image size right apart from that the last layer will definitely be thousand categories but my problem statement in this case has four categories suppose if you are really developing your problem statement you want to develop a classifier for cats and dogs you may be requiring two categories right so at that time you have to put two categories two dense layers in the output so i have removed this so here you can see that it is downloading the model of vg16 quickly okay it has downloaded it from this uh, url itself right so that is where your model is basically done now this fun this code is very very important in this code i have basically said that for layers in vg16 dot layers layer dot trainable is equal to false remember we are using that existing weights of image net so we need not retrain the weights that is pretty much important right only the training weight should happen in the last layer not in this middle layers okay so for this you can write like this and you can basically make the layers trainable as false now how many number of output classes i have written a generic code guys so that you get a number of output classes so we have used a glob function so here you see that once i execute this i will be getting the folders okay and if i execute it over here what is in my folders my folders will give me the path of everything now if i go and calculate the length of folders in this list it will basically give me a four output right then obviously you know that from the architecture from the architecture we saw that 
we have to flatten this layer after this right so flattening the layer is required so for flattening the layer what i'll do is that i will be using sorry this i had written vg16 okay you just have to write vg16.output once you execute this and then you can see the length of folders okay uh yes vg16.output length of folders here also i try to see the length of folders right then uh you can see over here i've used the length of folders as my output layer because the length of folder is nothing but four that basically means four output categories is put inside the dense layer and the activation is basically softmax function if you don't remember guys here is my activation softmax function that i've applied okay so this will get applied in the last layer which is pretty much important and i think i've taken all these things in my live sessions also and finally you get your input and finally you create your model as this where your inputs is nothing but vg16 dot input your output is nothing but whatever dense layer you have created in this prediction is basically output so execute this then once you see your model summary so this is your whole model summary so after executing this code you can actually see your model dot summary remember to check the last layer that is having four nodes okay after this you can do compile and these all are simple operations you can uh, read the data you can basically read your training data this is basically your data augmentation techniques that you want to apply remember data augmentation should not be applied to test data okay and this code you can see in the github right i have already given in the description so uh, this is basically your training data you are reading your test data you are basically reading and then you can actually start running this here i have given as epoch s20 if you see after the end of training i'm able to get somewhere around 69% i just did 20 if you increase it to 30 and 40 you'll be able to get this this is how your graph was right it is in increasing order and then you can also save this model so instead of writing resnet because i don't know why i have written this resnet but this is, should be vg16 vg16 model you can save it in the h5 file it will be getting saved in the same location now you can take your own image example guys just follow the steps i think you will be able to understand each and everything right so uh okay now one more thing uh, about this i told you about vg16 now there is one more architecture of vgg19 okay so in order to use vgg19 just remove this instead of writing vg16 just make it vg19 and just make it vg19 so once you execute it you will be able to see uh, it will work absolutely fine over here instead of vg16 just write it as vg19 change this variable name over here make your layer trainable as false and put all the information that you want to put in this right based on the changes that you have actually done that's it that is how vg19 will actually work and this is a very very common architecture itself so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel if you are not already subscribed and guys these are important to understand these are some advanced cnn techniques uh in the upcoming videos you'll be seeing that i'll be discussing about resnet inception mobile net and there are many things you can see over here resnet uh, different different versions are there like we discussed about vg16 and vg19 i missed about exception exception also i'll try to include we have mobile net mobile net v2 lot of this transfer learning techniques is there we'll discuss this also so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye